From the fields where he grew the grasses, Bill didn't see the first tower rise. News of the Kres lines, the route they would follow south, slipped past Junction, unnoticed. A quick wind rushing through the trees. Winter came and a raw coldness settled in the hills. The mesquite trees grew and bent into one another, and from the highway their bare limbs could have been the stripped frames of a thousand abandoned houses. It was January when Andy took the white van south to Junction. At first he counted the lattice towers he saw off the highway, but then grew tired of watching them coil above the dead cotton, their cables fitted to hooks like joints and sockets. Bill waved from the porch when Andy pulled into the driveway. They shook hands, clapping each other on the back. They pulled chairs outside and sat beneath an old mesquite. The chairs creaked and the house behind them shifted with the wind. Andy set the tape recorder on his chair and clicked the red light on. I had to get frost off my windshield this morning, he said, but now the day is awfully pleasant. That's right, the sun's pouring down on top of us. I should preface this, Andy said. Okay, this is Andy Wilkinson. I'll be visiting with Bill Neiman at his Native American Seed Company farm, so anytime you need to shut this off and take a break, or if you have a question or want to clarify, just let me know. Bill didn't want anything clarified, or to take breaks, or to ask questions. He talked for two hours. He said the Kres lines came to Junction through a letter in the mailbox. The LCRA was hosting an open house, some come-as-you-go cookies and beverage thing, to discuss the construction of power lines set to carry renewable energy. Bill folded the letter and put it back with the envelopes of electric bills and credit card companies. He marked a note on the calendar and circled it to remember because sure, he'd go. Renewable energy that can clean up the grid, he'd listen. He had been listening since the first turbine unfolded its blades in the panhandle. He listened as the mesas were capped white and people gave the turbines every sort of name. Some called them ghosts the latest form of industry haunting the Lano Estacado. Others half-joked they were devils. They said those red blinking lights were unholy eyes going on and off, on and off throughout the night. Besides, didn't those blades look like dark wings? People were good at being blind, but even the dim-eyed could see how wind was free. Those turbines made energy from something that blew most days. The years passed, the wind farms grew, and they watched the farmers and ranchers with turbines on their land cash fat checks at the bank. Construction brought new men and jobs, and the barbecue shops sold more food than they had in years. So Bill went to the open house. He was at the community center, and when he opened the doors, he saw police officers. Bill stopped in the doorway. He wasn't sure what first drew his eye. Maybe it was his neighbors huddled around a booth, the board police officers stationed by the doors, or the nervous utility worker explaining electromagnetic fields. He noticed a wall of maps along the back. He walked toward it. Bill didn't know what Kres meant. He didn't know why there were patterns of different lines spanning the state. He stood with six or eight other men, their jaws agape as they touched the crinkled laminate. It was a series of proposals. There were three main lines that crossed the county, and each had alternate branches. The plastic was smooth on his finger as he traced a line through Junction, dipping down to his farm. His farm was covered in tape. Bill took out a pocket knife, peeled the tape back, and saw not his farm, his house, the yellow fields and old mesquites, but a thin black line. It could have been drawn with a pen. 